In this video, we will talk about the pharmacology of proton pump inhibitors, also known as PPIs. There are currently six proton pump inhibitors or PPIs available. They are omeprazole or prilosec, esomeprazole or nexium, lansoprazole or prevacid, dexlansoprazole or capidex, rabiprazole or acifex, and pentoprazole or protonix. So as you can see, all the names have same prazole at the end. So it's easy to remember who are the PPIs. The mechanism of action of PPIs is in their name. So it says proton pump inhibitors. So they actually irreversibly bind with the proton pump that is responsible for hydrochloric acid secretion in the stomach. So as I said irreversibly binding it means that it's actually form a disulfide bond with the uh, proton pump which actually suppress the function of the proton pumps for about 24 to 48 hours and that new proton pumps are generated inside the body so that's why they have a longer effect the PPIs are actually have wide varieties of indications they are approved for use in gastroesophageal reflux disease they are also approved for gastric and duodenal ulcers and also non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAID induced ulcers. They have also been approved for Zollinger Ellison syndrome which happens because of a tumor in the pancreas which leads to hyperacidity in the stomach. And there are several side effects which are notable about PPIs. It happens due to the chronic acid suppression. The first one is osteoporosis. Because of the chronic use of PPIs, the calcium absorption is reduced. And the acidic environment in the gastrointestinal tract is important for the absorption of calcium ions so when we suppress this acid secretion with PPIs the absorption of calcium ion is decreased which leads to weak bones and ultimately possibility of bone fracture and osteoporosis the second important side effect is possibility of increased gastrointestinal tract infections and the third one is deficiency of vitamin B12 it's also related to absorption of vitamins let's uh, talk about the drug interactions in this line so since PPIs increase the pH of GI tract or reduce the acidity so they can affect the absorption of other drugs which actually depend on the acidic pH so they decrease the absorption of ketoconazole iron salts antiretroviral drugs and cephalosporins so this is a common drug interaction for PPIs if we look at the pharmacokinetic parameters of PPIs they have a, uh, all of the PPIs actually have similar pharmacokinetic parameters so there is not much difference between the six type of drugs we have and usually the plasma half-life is about one to two hour and most of the PPIs are actually entry coated or coated with a sustained release coating so that's why and some of them are also 
given as tablet and also as a capsule the capsule forms usually have the beads which have the small beads have the coating different types of coating it could be enteric coating or sustained release coating so that's why those beads should not be crushed or chewed otherwise they will lose their effect and another thing about uh, PPI pharmacokinetics is that they are highly protein bound about 97% of the drug is bound to plasma protein so that's why it leads to another drug interaction possibility with the drugs which are also highly protein bound for example warfarin and diazepam and PPIs are primarily metabolized by cytochrome P450 2C19 enzyme so this with this enzyme there is some pharmacogenomic considerations polymorphism in cytochrome P450 2C19 gene can affect the function of the enzyme so based on the polymorphisms there are basically three genotypic groups the first one is called rapid metabolizers or RM the second one is intermediate metabolizer or IM the third one is poor metabolizers or PM in poor metabolizers the CYP 2C19 enzyme activity is actually reduced so which leads to lesser breakdown of the PPIs ultimately leading to longer activity of these PPIs in other words the poor metabolizers actually respond very well to PPI therapy the studies uh, suggest that about 15 to 20 percent of the Asian population like Chinese Japanese Korean they are the poor metabolizers on the other hand the rapid metabolizers do not respond well to PPI therapy so in those populations higher dose of the drug may be needed and genotyping test for cytochrome p 452 c 19 polymorphism is commercially available but currently genotyping is not a requirement to initiate the therapy with this we end our discussion about PPI pharmacology.